when it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Looking to sell property in Glasgow? Call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 374 0409. Let's go! Well, good evening. Celtic players had a heart-to-heart at the weekend after dropping points at home to Kilmarnock as Rangers went clear at the top the next day. Mark Guidi, former goalkeeper, is here. Stephen McGinn, the captain of Falkirk, is here. And Mark, that's the big breaking news today. Joe Hart, we won't see him again after this season. He's retiring in May of this year. Well, wish, first of all, wish Joe Hart well, Paul. He's had a fantastic uh, career, several clubs down south, including Manchester City. And I think he's been brilliant, as you know, on this show. I've defended um, Joe Hart week in, week out. Some Celtic fans felt it's been time for a change for about a year or so, but he will be big gloves to fill and how Celtic are going to fill them um, I don't know but Joe Hart is going to be a hard act to follow the thing, the positive thing for Celtic Paul he will be as determined as ever to bow out as a league champion three titles in a row uh, with Celtic and they're certainly going to need that kind of character between now and the end of the season Stephen McGinn what do you think could this inspire Celtic and my goodness they need a bit of inspiration at the moment trailing Rangers yeah well I think they need anything to kind of kick start the them going again after the winter break but yeah echo what Mark says an amazing career for Joe Hart almost two different careers in terms of yeah. the, the great England and Man City goalkeeper and then he kind of lost his way for a couple of years and I think Celtic has been perfect for Joe Hart Joe Hart's been perfect for Celtic you know they had an issue with the goalkeeping department he's came in he, he's been infectious on and off the park for the, for the football club you can see how big an influence he has on the team and He's going to be huge but, uh, gloves to fill and just the whole department in general. I think they need probably two goalkeepers in the summer. Mm. Um, so, as, as we say, probably every transfer window, but another big one coming up for Celtic. Remember that moment, Mark Aguero! <laughs> the whistle went. <laughs> so, Alex will hate that if he's listening. Oh, but Man City, yeah, winning the title. Now is that picture, iconic picture yeah. of the goalkeeper, Joe yeah. Hart. Hands raised Brilliant. to heaven. Yeah. You know, what a career. I mean, genuinely a fantastic goalkeeper. 75 caps for England. You think of the talented keepers they've had over the years. But Paul, it's about what he does between now uh, and the end of May. He's won, what is it, five trophies with Celtic um, in two years. Still got a chance of winning another two um, this season. But like I say, longer term, uh, whether it's Brendan Rodgers or whoever, trying to replace Joe Hart will be an almost impossible task for Celtic almost impossible they will need to pull a rabbit out the hat to replace Joe Hart because if you you look at their transfer record recently Paul they're miles off it so where are they going to go and get somebody to replace Joe Hart within the the financial parameters that Celtic operate under will be almost impossible they've been linked with Kelleher the Liverpool goalkeeper who's fantastic I think Brendan Rodgers would love to have him at the football club and can understand why He'll probably leave Liverpool this summer, Paul, for run about twenty million quid. It's too much. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're not they're not in that ballpark, but that's the kind of standard they're looking to get. But as I say, we, we we had this conversation this time last year about Alan McGregor. Rangers pulled one out of the hat with Jack Butland. Celtic need to do something similar. Andre Lunin, his name was mentioned a few months ago for Celtic. He's the Real Madrid, one of the reserve keepers there. Mm. But also, you know, he wants to play. But you would imagine loads of clubs would be in for him come the summer. Paul, I, th- I think um, I don't know if Stephen will agree, but. Uh, if you're a goalkeeper for Celtic or Rangers any big club um, it's as much about your your, your mentality your bottle uh, as it is uh, about your ability um, that is so important uh, when you're a goalkeeper um, for Celtic and that's why I say it'll be an almost impossible task within the financial parameters that we believe Celtic are operating under to replace Joe Hart remember they got him in a free remember the goalkeeper before that Barkas a disaster so that shows you the size of the task that's in front of them whoever thought let's get Joe Hart that was such a brilliant move for Celtic wasn't it because he was number three at Tottenham Hotspur and he's been so influential as well Stephen Celtic fans what are you thinking 08, 08, 17, 17, 700 and I was going to say that as well look what Rangers did last summer who would replace Alan McGregor and whoever found uh, Jack Butland deserves the all the bonus that's going yeah and I'm not sure I mean you look at 
goalkeepers that have worked um, a lot of them tend to be on the, the side of experience and you think of just on Celtics um, Craig Gordon obviously similarities in terms of um, injury problems and was out of football for a while and Celtic was just a perfect fit for him so you wonder uh, is it is it worth I mean they're going to have to get two goalkeepers is it worth maybe having the, the slight gamble but I think within it they've got to Jack, Jack Butland the Jack Butland deal seemed too good to be true I remember thinking how are they getting him the free transfer when you think of a the criteria for in England for having homegrown players and the experience he had, the age he was at, you were thinking that's too good to be true. But he certainly proved an excellent piece of business and Celtic are going to get their thinking caps on to, to replace um, Joe Hart. Still a long way to go, but Celtic fans, what are your memories of Joe Hart and the influence he's been? And Mark, we saw it at the weekend, he made a couple of big saves against Kilmarnock. Hey, Paul, I would say had it not been for Joe Hart since after the winter break um, Celtic would be six or seven points behind not yeah. two points behind um, you know he's made some really um, big saves uh, in league games um, for Celtic so in terms of the league even though Celtic aren't top of the league anymore they'd been a far worse off position uh, had it not been uh, for Joe Hart so like I say huge gloves to fill Paul Celtic's record in the transfer market in recent times has not been great but they can't afford to get Joe Hart's replacement wrong. If they do, kiss goodbye to the title. You don't win a title mm -hmm. unless you've got a top goalkeeper. And I've said that all along. And if that means somebody's available at seven, eight, nine million quid, go and pay it all day long. And Celtic have got the money to go and do it. And the fans will be expecting a top quality uh, replacement. Um, Paul, you know, they're not going to settle for anything less. CCV could be back this ne next this weekend. He could be back for the game at Motherwell. My goodness, they uh, could use their best defender back. We'll talk about that shortly. For Rangers fans, what are you thinking? Well, this time tomorrow, Stephen, we'll know Rangers opponents in the last 16 of the Europa League. Obviously, there's games tonight. Just looking at some of the names that it could be, and there's some big ones there as well. Um, in the well, the draw we'll find out later tonight. But you look at Milan there, for example, Feyenoord. There's so many there. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how the fans out there look on the draw. I mean, there's some favourable favourable ties. You think of teams like, I know Braga are two down, mm -hmm. um, but teams have beaten in the last few years. You think with a fair chance of qualifying against, and then the other side of it, you look as a, a trip for the fans, some really yeah, exciting yeah. cities to visit. And Marseille is that possible? We've got yeah. uh, Lisbon, uh, Rotterdam, Milan, Roma, uh, Rome. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Prague, I know they've done that this season, but some, some really exciting trips to look forward to for Rangers fans. You can say Roma here as well. We often throw that to Barry these days because his nephew is now fluent in the Italiano. Mark, si, si. Yeah. How's your, uh, how's your German getting on, Mark? In case we can dispatch you to A German. Germany. Well, the Euros, oh, yeah, the yeah, Euros, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've still, yeah. The German is still <laughs> fresh in my memory, Paul, from 2006 yeah. covering the World Cup. So... 18 years ago I was there I had a great time and I, sobered, I picked up the uh, I picked up the German very very quickly Stephen you must be booked up already yep. surely all sorted no um, I mean yeah. we have we've got the free booking with cancellations in yeah. terms of we don't know we're, the ticket situation's not been as simple as we thought it no. might be so um, playing it by you at the minute Rangers fans what are you thinking Alan Hutton has been saying that James Tavernier has earned legendary status at Rangers and he's hailed the captain as the Ibrox club's best signing in modern history what do you think 0808 17 17 700 or you can whatsapp us on that number and you can join the conversation at Go Football Show Mark, we mentioned him earlier in the week, James Tavernier, 120 goals. Yeah. But look, he took a lot of stick. We all know that mm. um, yeah. a few years ago. Yeah. Um, but he took goodness, a lot of stick this season as well. He Paul. did early on. Yeah, was, yeah, a lot of people were saying, you know, replace him as captain. They thought that he was part of the problem uh, when things were going south under Michael yeah. Beale, having a number of players, but they just thought he wasn't a right uh, leader. But he certainly bounced back, and uh, any critics that he's had over the years and particularly this season, he certainly shut them up. And his manager paid tribute to the defender, the captain, 120 goals. Crazy amount of goals. It's really crazy as a fullback. I don't know if there was ever a defender scoring more goals in Scotland or even in Europe. So uh, he has a lot of qualities doing that, but not only with penalties, because he scored also important other goals, like in, uh, in the cup final, for example, the League Cup. And he's doing a really good defensive job, because in the first place, he's a defender for me not an attacking player, so he's not busy with uh, statistics to play for himself, but he's playing for the team like they all are doing. Stephen McGinn, what do you make of the captain? 
Is John Gregg one? This is, I thought I read somewhere this week, uh, this week that James Tavernier can go above him in terms of goal scored for Rangers. Am I right or wrong wow. saying that? I don't know if someone out there can. Greggy wasn't a huge goal who scorer. Is it? So who is it he can overtake? Yeah. Who is it he can overtake? Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be John Gregg. Who is it? I read somewhere yep. that he can overtake someone. Okay, well, uh, James, James will check scoring. that just now. I can't yeah, think. A it, defender it, it, scored more than 120 goals for Rangers. No, I can't think it of it. Be many. Yeah, John of many. Greg, of course, the greatest ever Rangers. What do you make of him? The way he's fought. I, I tell you, he's resilient, isn't he? Because he took so much stick. Yeah, even I was at the game in Paisley this year when the banner was up in the Rangers end, mm. uh, and a huge part of it you felt was directed at their captain. But I think it, I mean it does come with the territory of being the Rangers captain. Um, when you think of sometimes we do we look at bargains and you go through where he's came from. Um, I played against James Davenier when he was at Rotherham he was kind of right, wing, uh, right winger slash right midfielder and I didn't see him when he came up I didn't see him going on to be what he's become um, obviously at times he's been asked questions defensively um, but the amount of goals it, it's quite staggering it's phenomenal it really is for this weekend Mark early thoughts just now there's no team news at the moment but for Rangers the story is that people are getting better you remember this time last year they were beset with so many problems mm. but not so many this season I, Paul, I, I'm, I'll, I'll say I mean I said on Tuesday night that I think Rangers are on, on top of the table now to stay but what I would say I think out with the two games against Celtic Rangers have got 10 league games to go um, I think you know, arguably two of those most difficult games are, are the next two, the back to back. Home to Hearts on Saturday, away to Kilmarnock on Wednesday. I think it is. If Rangers take six points out of six, Paul, I think that absolute certainties to win the league. Absolute certainties, certainties yeah. if they take six points from the next two games. Now, if they drop a couple of points, that gives Celtic a glimmer of hope, providing. Celtic obviously go to Fur Park on Sunday and win, and then can't climb it. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't back uh, Celtic uh, too much the way things are, are going at the moment. I think if Rangers get six points out of six, their next two games, they've got more than one hand on the on the title for sure. Rangers fans on last night saying the media are not giving enough credit to Rangers. I, I, I just I and don't how see do they back that. it up? I well, mean, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, sure. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's not even worth responding to that. That's absolute nonsense. For sure. I think you often think that when one of the big two is going wrong for them, you get the opposition fans. So obviously a lot of Celtic fans have been on this week here and elsewhere um, complaining about what's going wrong. But yeah. Rangers have had so much credit, but quite rightly. They have had a lot of credit. But by the way, Paul, and Philippe, come on, be the first guy to say yeah. this. I've not won the league yet. True. I've still to do yeah. it. I've still got 12 games to go. And, and the hard work starts now, Stevens. Look, he's been at the top of the title. He's chasing a title um, just now. Albeit it's in it's in, in League One, but nonetheless it's still a title. You've got to get over the line. Rangers have got themselves in a fantastic position. They've put themselves firmly in the driving seat. However, they're still to go and win it, and that's why Philippe Kamara will not get buried away, carried away. That's why Barry Ferguson, as a former Rangers captain, isn't getting carried away because they haven't won it yet. So they'll get all the praise that's coming, and more so when they win it. But at the moment. All they've done, all they've done, is put themselves in a right good position, and they'll get credit for that. But the real credit comes when you deliver a title. Look at Celtic, five trebles in seven years. The praise that they had, and by the way, you could argue that Celtic never not get enough praise because it was taken for granted. Oh, they've won another treble, they've won another treble. How difficult is it to win a treble? Yeah. It's very, very difficult, and yet Celtic done it with regularity in the past seven years. That is it. I mean, to get to win any league, it's so hard, so mentally. Training and it's going to chat. There'll be a test. Something will come up, maybe unexpectedly for Rangers. They might win the next two, and then it might be the game after. They drop points at some point. They'll have a, a little moment, uh, a rocky moment. Um, even if it's Celtic, just maintaining the run right up to the to the game at Ibrox, when they could potentially pull away. Um, but it's probably now that they're on top. All of a sudden, I think I think the the mentality that it's almost the momentum of it's been like a train. But I do think it's just the way football works. At some point, they will maybe face a game where they go 1-0 down um, like the Hearts game early in the season I know they're coming up in this Hearts game against where they're really going to have to dig deep um, because I don't think they're just going to continue in this manner without any sort of uh, trip up So you would disagree with Mark there that you don't I just think... think I just think it's going to be uh, the way the league works the, the team they talk to they do win a lot of games mm -hmm. I don't think so I think Celtic will win their next couple uh, their next huge test I think is going to be Tynecastle mm -hmm. um, obviously um, as much as Celtic every time you go out you're thinking 
they aren't really in full flow. Um, but I think with, if, if Carter Vickers is back, and, and it's a big if because he's really struggled to stay fit, but if Carter Vickers came back on the pitch, then history shows that when he's on the pitch, Celtic don't lose a lot of football matches. Um, he's so important to them. I think he is the integral player for Celtic um, and a huge part of why they've struggled this season. But I just think to win a league, there's always those moments where... Um, the, the, the test, the test, the big test is still to come. One of the back pages today, Mark, is that um, Tom Lawrence has been saying he thinks Cyril Desers can be a real star and help Rangers to lift this title. Mm. So he has done what's well, fourteen goals, isn't it, yeah. so far this season? Yeah. And we know it's been a slow burn. He still misses some really good chances, but he's yeah. beginning to. The, the Rangers fans are really, I always said love him, that's maybe a bit strong, but they've really taken to him. Do you think he could be vital on the way to the title, if that's what happens? Uh, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll need to be, yep. um, Paul. You know, As we know, Philippe Clamont re retakes his squad, and you know, Dessers um, is a part of that. And I would imagine, bearing in mind, I mean, he missed an absolute sitter at Celtic Park on December the 30th. I mean, an absolute sitter, and any Rangers number nine worth his salt would be burying that all day long. He's missed a sitter on Sunday at Perth, but he has chipped in with goals. And I'd imagine if he gets a chance to play against Celtic at Ibrox on April the 7th, um, the Sunday afternoon, there'll be nobody more determined than him uh, to go and show uh, what he's all about. And sometimes you think with, with, with somebody like that, there's a, there's a script waiting for him. There's, yeah. a, there's mm -hmm. a lovely finish uh, of the story uh, going to be there and, and Dessers is going to be uh, a big part of it. But he has to... Uh, relax and I said when the transfer window closed there was a lot of focus on what Celtic didn't do in the transfer window and rightly so but I did say that I thought perhaps the fact that Rangers didn't get a number 9 in might come back to haunt them and it might still but at the moment it looks as though what they've got is going to be good enough to win the title Yeah okay beginning is, is maybe uh, exaggerated but uh, for sure we can we can grow a lot if I see how they are playing now uh, these last weeks and, and four months ago, we cannot speak about the beginning because that was the beginning. But there's still uh, a lot of room for progression. It's clear. They are, all are growing also these last couple of months uh, without exception. So, uh, yeah, we're going to invest a lot with all staff in them. And they invest also a lot in themselves and in the group by, because every day everybody's super focused, hardworking. So I didn't have any problem with that in these four months. That's the first time in a team that I never had to smack somebody who's not focused anymore or, or, or not motivated. So no, uh, it's a really important thing. But they all feel that they are in a special study and that it can be a really special study. Stephen McGinn, were you ever smacked by a manager for not focusing? <laughs> I'm sure the answer is yes. <laughs> if not, maybe this weekend. <laughs> no, but I mean, you kind of know what he's saying, that momentum's building. Um, you, and you look at you, you twist it. It's, there's a bit of Ange Postacoglu's first mm. season where Celtic just gained momentum and once they got into the lead, um, they, just, they just kept going. And, and I think what Philippe Clement's looking for, look, look, now you're ahead, let's go and pull ahead. Um, what he is doing I mean he's doing a lot of rotating the team he's freshening it up but within that those core core five or six players that he really trusts um, and they're just doing the, the job I thought it was going to be a really tricky game up in Perth um, but, but you just get that sense at the minute once Rangers go 1-0 up with a defensive record this season and it seems to be enough um, across the city they're 1-0 up and you're thinking they still need that second goal Is that true? Clemel said afterwards they didn't feel that any danger of losing a goal and I think I agree with you having watched yeah. it you know even at 1-0 we're going to talk Celtic after the break yeah. and what are the solutions because there's been still loads of messages coming in about what's gone wrong at Celtic but for Rangers Mark a very weekend, camp, it was, and it was 1-0 for you know 80 minutes 79 yeah, minutes it was a, a couple of pens but, but they were yeah. always in um, control and I think I've said for a few weeks now Rangers look very relaxed mm. very confident that they'll get over the line sometimes it's not pretty how they go, it's not free flowing, but nonetheless, they get over the line, and that's all that matters. Whereas with Celtic, I just feel now for the past five or six games, um, between the manager, the players, and the supporters, they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders and they can't seem to shake it off. Diamondi, what a goal he scored, and the manager paid tribute. No, I told you guys he can play in the three positions in midfield. We had a lot of talks with him about that. Uh, I want also to know 
players really well before they come into the building. So I want players who are available for the team, who don't only come to play their own game or their own position. Dio can play play the three positions in midfield with a, without a problem. But it's good for him, of course, to to feel directly really good in the team. But it's because of all the people around him also. It's about Connor and John speaking a lot and Lonnie speaking a lot with him. It's about players in front of him who are available to, to receive the passes. It's it's about the connection together. He adapted really fast because the, the other guys are helping in that way. Steve, really you, you like the look of him so far, Diamante? Yeah, I mean, he came in and you can... I don't mean you can tell from the way it, his, his old team spoke about him, but they, they were gutted to lose him, but also wish, wishing him the best in terms of like, as if they'd lost a special one. Um, he's from a really highly respected academy in the Right to Dream produce some special players and um, I think you can just tell you can tell right away he, he's gone into their team and, and he looks he looks like he's going to improve that midfield and all of a sudden you're starting to think towards the big games and your cup final team as such and right away you're thinking Diamandi's in there it's Diamandi, Lundstrom and Cantwell probably if you if they were to line up the cup final this weekend and Mark he can pack a punch yeah he can you know and a good you know that was a really good dig mm. And his goal, uh, I mean, you think, he, you know, he's young, he's, he's still a boy, but he's um, he's adapted uh, well. And the fact that there's not been a settling in um, period, uh, if you like, he's been thrown in at the deep end. And he's responded uh, very, very well. I mean, you look at that as well, Paul, you've got another point on guys like Diamandi. So, you know, if Diamandi was getting signed by Celtic, he'd be labelled a project player, wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. He'd be labelled one of the... Whereas Rangers, they came in, it's just like, there's no mention of, of projects or one for the future. It's like, you know, if we're getting you, you are for the here and now. And that's a mentality at Rangers. Cortez comes in young, but he's, he's right in. Whereas yeah. Celtic, you know, it's as if they buy two or three for the one position and hope that one of them comes good. Whereas Rangers is okay. And Celtic maybe get the, more money than Rangers to do that. However, it, it seems to be a difference in terms of mentality when they sign players as well. Rangers fans, what are you thinking ahead of the game at the weekend? It's a great game, isn't it? Rangers against Hearts. 50,000. There won't be a seat to be had at Ibrox, 3 o'clock. And then Sunday, Motherwell against Celtic. And you've got an interest in that one big time, Stephen, because your brother Paul will be there. And, you know, I, I heard from Stephen Reside today, Motherwell have apologised to Stuart Kettlewell not for anything other than they extended his contract last year until 2025, but didn't tell the fans about it. Mark, it's a most one. unusual one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, um, th- th- that's not good comms no. um, at all. Really not good comms. That's a, a terrible oversight. Mm. Are you available to do it for them? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> We're back with Mark and Stephen next. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Looking to sell property in Glasgow? Call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 374 0409. Let's go! It's the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Paul Cooney, Stephen McGinn and a smiling Mark Guidi. I'm just thinking that. that it? Bit. Did you have a wee sunbed before that, that photo shoot? Oh yeah, it looked like it. High blood pressure. But that's another story. <laughs> Rob's on standby. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lovely, I lovely photos. The makeup yeah. artist went straight that week, weren't they? But honestly, Stephen, it's in the Rogue's Gallery. Actually, oh. lots of people uh, have, have seen them on the, the billboards all over the West. Oh, yeah. So thanks for making the switch. More and more people yeah. tuned in. Even yep. down south, yep. Paul was down seeing old young Dr. Dom down south in oh. Cambridge you know, avid listener spreading the word down there uh, about them all about the Go Radio football show so yeah all good and just watching the, yep. the pictures coming in there Paul lovely to see Man City mm-hmm. sending best wishes to Joe Hart and his retirement England national team sending their best wishes to, to Joe Hart can you think about it he's, he's a legend in, in football for what he achieved down south and for his um, almost three years up at Celtic um, here he's been he's been fantastic and the biggest compliment you can pay him Paul is Big, big gloves uh, to fill. What a task that is to go and try and replace Joe Hart. Joe Hart retiring at the end of the season. He said today, this is something I've thought about for a while. There's no right or wrong time, but the way this club works is that I'm playing at the moment. There's so much to play for. There's so much heart and soul poured into what we're doing as a football club. Joe Hart, Celtic this afternoon. So he's there for, what, another two to three months. What's going to happen during that period? His manager... Brendan Rodgers paid tribute to him, saying, for all he has done in football, Joe Hart deserves a huge praise and congratulations. He's been such a brilliant asset to Celtic, of course, and the wider game. 
at the highest level, domestically and internationally. I mean, 75 caps, as you said, two titles with Man City, two FA Cups mm. as well with Man City, yeah. two titles with Celtic, could be three, yeah, could be, mm. and the Scottish Cup, and also two League Cups so far. So, And he was a treble winner, Stephen. It's quite a record for Joe Hart. What's his record going to be at the end of the season? I know I'm sure that's his, his aim now that he's... Cause it's a difficult decision. Um, there's no exact science to when when you, you chuck it. I didn't know if Joe Hart... I thought Joe Hart might leave Celtic in the summer, but I wasn't sure if he'd continue to play. Now that he's did that, I'm sure he'll be... It's like almost... Uh, let's enjoy the, these last 10, 15 games. Let's see if we can suck any more out of this team, which is let's, it's still a big part of us a treble winning Celtic squad. There's a lot of guys in there that have got over the line. And can they get themselves going to, to make this a real title race and take it right to the wire uh, and finish on the right side of it? Because it'd be a nice way for Joe Hart personally to go out. Um, you think of, as I said, the way his career seemed to go from pillar to post for us and mm. you're thinking how can such an amazing career an amazing player how can it go so wrong so it'd be nice for him to finish in a winning note yeah it would be I'm just thinking to you know the same thing for Alan McGregor last season and then he finished with nothing Celtic won the treble you know so you wonder if uh, history's going to repeat itself only in reverse at the opposite side of the of the city but I'd imagine, I would imagine Paul because Joe Hart has been a massive part of all positive things that have happened mm -hmm. to Celtic in the past three years under under, under Ange and, and uh, you know anything positive uh, this season in terms of how he's helped to drive the dressing room mm -hmm. and his calmness uh, he's been a real help to Callum McGregor as you remember was a you know taking over Scott Brown and when Celtic won a real uh, difficult period uh, after losing ten in a row etc etc so I would imagine every Celtic player to a man in that squad. If nothing else, they'll be saying, let's do it for Joe. Mm -hmm. uh, let's Mc go and do it for Joe. Yep. Alan McGregor should have had probably... He did have the good send-off when I mean, you think of the Scottish Cup final a couple of days after a European final and yeah. he got the big send-off. It um, seemed strange that he was kept on to, to almost be a number two and then end up playing again. So um, I'm sure that won't happen for Joe Hart. The PR has been really good for Rangers recently. Quite rightly, they've been doing most things, if not everything right. For Celtic, it's not been so good. Um, Stephen, can this be positive PR for Celtic in that it's an issue for next season, but can this have an effect in the dressing room? If you were in as one of his teammates, would you say, we're going to do this for, yeah, the fans, yourself, but for Joe as well? Yeah, I mean, usually, I mean, it's not for the lack of, of effort. Um, what you're looking at now, I mean, Celtic season, it's mad when you think of the squad, probably the finance involved in assembling a huge squad and you speak about winning a title and how important the squad is it seems to disintegrate you seem to be the season seems to be you just constantly speak about yeah but when Carter Vickers is back fit yeah but when Rui Hattati is back fit yeah but when the guys come back from the Asian Cup it, it, it just seems to be Leila Badel in the season when he comes back it just seems to be they're constantly get, relying on these guys coming back from injury um, is it a case that maybe a bit foggy in the head have they lost a little bit of drive in terms of being so successful over the last couple of seasons and it's they're having to work harder for it having to dig deeper maybe maybe it's a case that can dig something else out of them but um, it's probably I'm going to tell you the party line that's been all season Celtic's season relies on keeping Carter Vickers Rio Hatati and Alistair Johnson fit Sure, and so far they haven't done that with Atati. And Mark, it was no surprise the Asian Cup was coming mm. and they've got so many Asian players who've been really good, especially you know the ones that we they know that mm -hmm. came two years ago. And did, but this wasn't a surprise. It's mm. almost as if they beat Rangers in the derby and yeah. they thought that's going to see Celtic through January and you know they've lost to Tati. Kyogo didn't go, we know that. Um, where was the planning? I guess it's just the recruitment has not been the way it was just a couple of years before. Yeah, and you know you, you can't even live off the success of oh, Hatati yeah. was great and Kyogo was great and Matt O'Reilly was great. That was yeah. four windows ago. Yeah, Jota. Uh, Jota was great. Carter yeah. Vickers was great. And, and it was and the praise that Celtic had yeah. for that and the way Ange handled everything and, and then initially uh, Don Mackay who was the CEO and, and then Michael Nicholson but listen in terms of Celtic standards considering the funds that they have available and I know there's no guarantee if you spend 10, 10 million quid on a player but having good funds there should um, at least give you a better chance of being successful and getting it right. 
And if I've been brutally honest, Paul, Celtic's success rate in the last four windows has been very, very poor. Not not good enough. Too many projects. Um, and they need to be careful not taking the fans for granted. I've spoken to a couple of Celtic fans in the past couple of days at different times who season ticket holders put more than that and, you know, business involvements in the club and at a different level and, and things. And, and one word that one of the guys used to, to describe it, feeling a lot of, of his friend as well, in terms of how Celtic is at the moment, in terms of behind the scenes, the, the knowledge that they have, the policies in the transfer market that they seem to have, and uh, scunnered, was the word, it was strong, mm-hmm. absolutely scunnered with his football club. Um, just not scunnered with the manager, but scunnered with his football club. And, um, you know, you need to be really, really careful, don't take the fans for granted, because you know, they pump not only the, the vocal support, but they put in about £40 million pounds a year through through different things. So um, the, the windows have not been satisfactory. And even small things, Paul, like I said on Tuesday night, it's been known for a while as a need for a left back. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that you, you, it's easy to go out and find better than Greg Taylor, right? Because I, I really like Greg Taylor and have done for, from day one. And at two million quid, he's been an, an unbelievable uh, piece of business. But it was clear for everybody to see, even in the, the handful of games that Bernabeu's had in the past two years, that he was not up to the task of playing for Celtic. Then that's not the boy's fault, nothing against the boy. But he, there should have been better brought in. There should have been better brought in the door than Bernabeu to play uh, or to push uh, Greg Taylor. And the fact that they couldn't do that, with the funds available and, and they've known it for months, I just I don't think it's acceptable. The fans weren't happy at 5-5 five to five on Saturday when Kelly got that late, late equaliser. This was the manager speaking about the reaction. Listen, I, I totally get it. Today wasn't what as a Celtic supporter and th- that you want to see. I think that as it, like we might you know, we might have had that reaction having won in the game 1-0 and, and we would have deserved that as well because I think performance-wise we, uh, it, it was nowhere near what, what, what's needed as a Celtic player and as a Celtic team. And then that's my responsibility. I now have to go away and look at it in the week and uh, and look to get a, you know a more consistent performance level next week. Stephen, we heard you. We saw reports of you were asked about the Celtic performance at the weekend, and you said that Nicholas Kuhn, for example, he wouldn't have made the Kilmarnock starting eleven at the weekend. I just, I mean, the headlines. I was just trying to describe the transfer window. Yeah. Um, Two or three games before the break, Celtic had had a terrible start of December. I think it coincided the, the drop points to Motherwell. Mm. They'd lost to Kilmarnock, mm. lost at home to, to Hearts. And it seemed to be they were crawling towards January. And all they thought was, if we can just just stay ahead into the January window and then we'll make up for the summer. The summer was a disaster. Brendan Rodgers will get to... I mean, because all he spoke about the first half of the season was quality. We're mm. going to sing quality, need more quality. And it was almost a feeling within the Celtic support. They then, I thought they played well up at Dens Park. Um, they were excellent in the Derby against Rangers. Mm. Um, and they were really impressive away to St Mirren. And from crawling to the January window, all of a sudden they'd get into a wee bit ahead of steam. And you're thinking, this player's going to wait to the Asian Cup. Very interested to see what they add. Um, Brendan Rodgers isn't going to stand for a lack of activity. That was just the general thought. That wasn't just me. That was yep. the whole of Glasgow. And then when you see the business they do, I mean, I mean, you, Adam Ada and un, un, unfairly is probably labelled a, a Norwich sub or whatever. I'm not going into that. He looks like a really promising player that if you put it all together could be, I mean, he's an international striker, not doing him any disservice at all. I think if he was a permanent signing, you'd think there's a lot to work with in the future. But, with bringing him in and playing him, all of a sudden you're getting the best striker in the league over the last couple of seasons. You're dropping him back into midfield. You're then splitting up that midfield that started to get going in terms of Bernardo, O'Reilly and Cal McGregor. And then I just felt with the, the wingers, Celtic under Brendan Rodgers in the first spell, a huge part of their success was Scott Sinclair, James Forrest, Patrick Roberts, real quality out in the wide areas. And, and not the Dyson Maida, Leila Bada, these guys have been really successful Celtic players but they, they did they did play differently under an inch post goggle and you're thinking Brendan Rodgers could have done with a Jota I know it's not easy to go and get a Jota but he's going to go and sign a winger of, of quality so then when Nicholas King comes in 
you're thinking, right, this guy, you're expecting three million, come on, he's going to be, he's going to be better than what they've, what they've had, he's going to suit the Brendan Rodgers. And from the evidence so far, I mean, he might prove me not long, long term, but I'm looking at Matty Kennedy and Danny Armstrong when mm-hmm. the seasons are having, and I was just saying, he's not going to walk into the Kilmarnock team the way he's playing, right. never mind the Celtic team. And um, I just couldn't believe the lack of real business that they did in January. Context is everything, and you can see what Stephen meant by that. But it's um, it's not been good enough from no, Celtic. And, and I think as well, Paul. You know, I, I don't know if the policies are set in stone. And again, you know, nobody from the club has ever come out and said that. But we can all, you know, join the dots and put the pieces of the jigsaw together. But sometimes you've got to be flexible as well. You know, every signing can he be twenty four or under with a resale value. Every signing can he be between two and three million quid and whatever. And, and I get you know, you look into the stats and. Every now and again, you'll find a gem, and, and that's great. But sometimes, what you've just got to say, let's go and get, we need a 33, 34 year old to come in and help Callum McGregor. Help, just, let's just come in and show up. Look at Aaron Moy, brought him in, what, 31, 32 years old? Yep. Look at Colo Turi, yeah. brought him in. Right. Yeah. Look at Rangers under Walter Smith a few years ago, Davy Weir, 38, 39, that's the great service that he gave yeah. Rangers, captained mm-hmm. up with three titles um, in a row. So sometimes you've just got to be flexible and bring in that wee bit of experience every now and again. And that doesn't mean to say that you break away from your main policy, although I'm, I don't agree with Celtic signing policy. However, just show greater flexibility. You know, just it doesn't need to be set in store. And again, I think that lack of flexibility or apparent lack of flexibility will cost Celtic in the end come May. This was the manager saying he's going to go away, analyse the game at the weekend what's been going wrong the game we go away and analyse and look at and we're here to train the players support the players um, and that's that's our job as, as, as a manager and, and as a coach you know the, the mind is, is the key at this point of the season it's it's so it's, it's really really disappointing today it will be for a few days but then we've got to we've got to go again we've got a really important game and we can't be afford to be dropping too many more points because uh, like I said we've, we've done that too many times especially at home Celtic fans, what are you thinking? 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get your home ready for the market with help from their team of experts. Let's go. This time tomorrow night, I'll be here with Barry Ferguson and Andy Walker looking into the games at the weekend, which kick off while well, there's championship tomorrow night. Talk about that soon. But then Saturday in the Cinch Premiership, Hibs against Dundee, Kilmarnock against Aberdeen, Rangers against Hearts, Ross County Livingston, that's some game at the bottom, and St Mirren against St Johnson. And then Sunday, High Noon, Motherwell against Celtic at Fir Park and some great games in the championship as well. Some of the headlines today, well, the top story is that Joe Hart, I think he surprised many people, age 36, saying that's it, hangs up his gloves at the end of the season. Uh, other news, Cameron Carter-Vickers is training with Celtic this week. Brendan Rodgers giving himself until tomorrow, Saturday probably, to decide whether or not he will return. And my goodness, how they've missed him. And Rangers this time tomorrow will know their opponents for the Europa League, the last 16. Motherwell apologised today to Stuart Kettlewell, the manager, and their fans for failing to communicate the manager's extended contract until 2025. Um, good for Stuart Kettlewell, good for Motherwell, do you think, Stephen, that he is staying on and he's got a bit of security? Yeah, I'm not sure what, what's went on there, whether he's triggered an option and maybe they've had a look at his contract. The thought of extending it and realising that he's already triggered that, I'm not sure, the ins and outs. But yeah, I think he's he's done a really good job since he took over. You know, Motherwell were in real danger of um, going to the Championship before they took over. Really steadied the ship, really improved them uh, last season. This season's been tough. It has been tough at times. Conceded far too many goals. Um, really, really threatening to be a good side at times. Quite inconsistent. But I think it's good to have that solid base uh, looking ahead for the next few years. Mark, it's uh, difficult for uh, Motherwell this season and the fan ownership. I know they're saying there was a AGM last night. And the chairman, Jim McMahon, says there's some interest in the club. So they've got the fan owner, they've got 71%. But it might be, obviously, if someone else comes in to get a controlling uh, interest in the club, they would have to sell some of those shares uh, Mm. because it's a cracking club. But how you can survive at the top without an influx of money, I just don't, it must be so hard. Yeah, and and, you know, at least I've been honest and transparent about it that, you know, they they can keep the club steady, but they can't really push the club on, which is fine. There's nothing 
wrong with that but how do you do it you know they've, they've got a kind of fan base what's mm-hmm. the What's the average form? About, about 4,000, 4,500. So they've got that. But, you know, all of a sudden, they're not going to find another 5,000 season ticket holders um, overnight. Um, they've been very, very uh, good in recent years in terms of producing one or two of their own. So you think of like James Scott and you think of David Turnbull. Mm. And the moment they've got Lennon Miller, who I'd imagine they'll, they'll, they'll sell for one and a half to two million quid um, over the next year or so. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, they've been good. Uh, that way, but yeah, if there's anybody out there with uh, with money, you know, anybody apart from Taylor Swift, then you know, there's um, you know, maybe they could they could step forward. <laughs> You're absolutely right, uh, Stephen. You mentioned Elon. You were absolutely right. I don't know why we doubted you that uh, James Tavernier has he equaled John Gregg's record. What's the situation for goals? Yeah, both 120 goals. I started to doubt myself once yeah. you guys, uh, yeah. but yeah, both 120. So one more goal to take over the Great Silver Ranger. Wow. And John, of course, was there for such a long time. Mm. So John Gregg scoring uh, from free play and taking the penalties as well. So he was brilliant from the spot, Mark. But yeah. listen, it's long before your time. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, yeah. I was, you know, I know John Gregg and he was, mm. he was great and uh, what a ranger he was, the captain of the 1972 team um, and, and the manager, of course, too. I, But yeah, I, w- I was surprised at that, that stacks. It's not been mentioned often when you mm. think of like, you know, Tavernier getting his hundred goals and keeping up and keeping up. We thought it might have been uh, mentioned a bit more, but I have to say it, and I apologise to John Gregg for it, but I'm taken aback that he scored so many goals for Rangers, even though, you know, he, he played in the team for 16, 17 years. John Gregg, CBE, and he's so unassuming, isn't he, Mark, yeah, when you meet nice him? Man. He's a cracking... Yeah, but good, good. Yeah. You know, when, uh, when John took over as kind of like, um, you know, Dick Advocates kind of comms yeah. guy, you know, he was... He was he was there to help Dick, you know, just kind of yeah. guide him, um, you know, back in 1998 when Dick took over and had some great fun with, 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 with Greggy when he was, you know, trying to organise the players and get players to come and do the mm-hmm. pressers and, and bring in Dick. He was, he was brilliant. He was an unconscious uh, comedian. Yeah, a lot of time for John. Other news today, Kelly Boss, Derek McInnes, he wants to end an impressive campaign by lifting the Scottish Cup. So he, has, he said it already, Stephen. He's your old boss. I know you think a lot of him and obviously they could do it that would be some achievement yeah he, he's, he's big on the cups he's always obviously he's a lot of success in terms of getting to cup finals at Aberdeen only ever getting over the line once but I know frustrated him but he's got to fancy his chances been up to Pataudry recently and won one now uh, I think they're in a better place now than uh, they were then Aberdeen still with their trouble still conceding goals um, I think they'll fancy their chances of getting back to Hamden and then it's all about um, turning up on the day. You, you, the firepower they've got when you think of Van Veen, Greg Stewart coming in in January um, and can't get into their team. It just shows you what a good squad he's built. We mentioned last night Billy Bowie and the money that he and the directors have put in to mm-hmm. ensure, for example, the pitch is going to be ripped up, I think, next year, Mark. Mm-hmm. And they've got the training facility coming as well. It would be brilliant to get Silver Wheel, but it's so tough, isn't it, to beat Celtic or Rangers? Yeah. Uh, they've done it in the League Cup. Uh, not the Silverware, obviously, but could they get the Scottish Cup? Paul's every chance in a one-off yeah. game. You know, the, you know, shown this season already that, that they can beat Celtic. I mean, three games against Celtic haven't lost. Yeah, they've beaten Rangers, albeit it was Michael Beale's team, but, you know, they've beaten them. Derek's a, a very, very astute manager. He knows his stuff, and it's great that Kilmarnock like are, are backing. You know, if Derek's saying, look, I want to play in grass. We need a new training facility. Get me a couple of players in in January, and they're, and they're finding a way because... They know, having had Steve Clark, Paul, which was great to get Steve Clark, they then lost Steve because he was doing so well, took the Scotland job, and then they did, they did a couple of problems um, after that with managers. So they know when they're on to a good thing. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying Derek will be taking the mickey behind the scenes, but in terms of he'll be asking for things, he'll be pushing the boat because he's in a position of strength. That's what managers do, and rightly so. And it's good to see that Billy Bowie and uh, the board there are, are backing Derek because if they don't give him just about everything he wants yeah. then it would be in demand if it, if, it, if it was known it was looking for something else I, I don't mean any dis- disrespect to Hearts because they're having a fantastic season um, for the best striker this season but if you're to handpick a team who might beat a Celtic Rangers in a cup final just on this season's mm-hmm. evidence you would be Kilmarnock um, and you speak of Steve Clark the first you think of hopefully not any time soon but when the time comes that Steve Clark steps down you would think of Derek McInnes has been the next man, um, you look at what he's did at Aberdeen, 
um, and now Kilmarnock. I mean, he took Kilmarnock from fourth in the Championship to, I think, they're touch wood, near uncertainties for European football at the end of this season. Mm -hmm. Phyllis McLeish, of course, one of the big shareholders as well, mm -hmm. and on the board, is really passionate about uh, Kilmarnock. What about David Martindale? I see he's been having a pop, probably quite rightly, about VAR. He said the SFA have got it wrong by apologising to Hibs after that decision about the Nicky Devlin penalty that wasn't given at the weekend. He thinks that other clubs deserve apologies. That is an issue, Mark, isn't it? it? Is. If you say sorry to one, yeah. there's a, going to be a list of people. Yeah, um, I, I, I've missed the light. And Paul, who, who actually apologised was it Crawford yeah. Allen or was it, was it well, someone else? It just else said there was a meeting with the SFA, so I'll continue to check it. Yeah, but, but, yeah. yeah in, in general terms, yeah, because I, I would imagine every club's been hard done to um, at some stage um, this season, or certainly last season since Farr came in. And, um, you know, I think it's good to, to, to apologise, but if you're going to apologise to one, you need to do it all the time. And with the recent VAR report that came out, then Crawford Allen would probably never be off the phone. So I don't think they mentioned him. Hibbs released a statement saying after a meeting, the governing body had acknowledged an error was made and had apologised for it. Yeah, I mean, again, Paul, you, you look at it, you can see from first viewing, to me, uh, watching sports in the other night, that's a penalty kick all day long. But you've got the safety blanket of VAR, and then VAR checks it, and they still don't give a pen. I found that incredible. I, I was just laughing at the Miofsky one. He's, his head punched yeah. off his shoulders, and how that can, how you can look at that and not give a penalty. It's just, I don't get it. It's David Marshall. He's a national hero because of what he did against <laughs> Miofsky. <laughs> no, it was Mark. That for you. Is it goalkeepers' union? Are you going to defend it, him? No, I mean I think you know having seen the Alistair Johnson penalty kick that Celtic got a couple of weeks earlier. At, um, at, uh, at Easter Road and then there's been a precedent now for goalkeepers falling through we saw it at the World Cup um, in Qatar there was a couple of penalty kicks um, to, normally goalkeepers would get away with that I mean they can get away with whatever they want uh, basically but not anymore so again yeah I was surprised that wasn't a penalty but I thought Devlin's handball was more of a penalty kick than David Marshall's one yeah <laughs> Stephen that is a goalkeeper's union that. it is isn't it <laughs> ah, quite right yeah the former St Mirren Reserve goalkeeper. <laughs> Barry, Barry was looking for footage, wasn't he? <laughs> was that? Barry was looking for footage, if anyone could source. He was, that's right. None's goals. come in yet, but uh, even black and white will take it. You have got. You must have some. You get the old cine cameras. Oh, yeah. There was, must be some. It? No, yeah. what was it? No, listen. No, uh, yeah. the only time was, I played, you know, yeah. Steve Morton, remember the old Tenant Sixes? Of course. Pop, played in the old Tenant Sixes. One, two, I used to have that. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> get sent off, played, for, played against... Yeah. I think Cam Campbell Money was a goalie. Okay, Campbell yeah. got sin binned. Uh -huh. I came on uh -huh. for him. Yeah. Conceded three goals in about two minutes and then get sin binned myself. So, You're kidding. Yeah, yeah. Surely go. someone out there's got yeah. that. Must be old. It's on STV. Jeremy McNeil was a commentator. Jeremy, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it really? Yeah, yeah it was. And yeah. I tell you, one of the goal scorers against me that time, remember the old striker for Hart, Scott Crabb? Of course. Scott Crabb Crabby. was one of the yeah. uh, the uh, the goal scorers. So right, there you go. You're not on Radio Scotland. They've got everyone else, haven't they, there from the, <laughs> from the East? Uh, you're, you're not moonlighting at the Beeb this week, are you? No. 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 <laughs> That's right. My hockey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh eight, oh eight, seventeen, seventeen, seven hundred. We can't wait for the weekend and the games that are coming up. Celtic fans have been on, not happy with what's happening, but can they flick a switch and change things tough to on do, Sunday? Paul. Yeah, it's yeah. tough to do. Celtic really need to find their mojo if they like. It's like they just said, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's just go for it now. Everybody's pretty much written us off. Let's go and show people what we're about and go for it because you know, the thing is despite the, the, the form um, in recent weeks they're a good team I mean they're, they've got some fantastic um, individual players but it's just not clicked for them It is a puzzling season when you think of the, the team performance that night at home to Atletico Madrid think of some of the performances away to away to Hearts at Tynecastle, home to Aberdeen home to Rangers um, it's, it's scary to think that's in, within that same season they can deliver some of the performances but I also th sometimes I mean the team they put out and you look at the team they could potentially have sometimes the team they end up on the pitch with is seriously weak I, mm. I looked at the team they finished with on sa Saturday um, against Comanna and I'm thinking no wonder the Kelly boys really fancied their chances and why they couldn't put them away when you the front three of Yang O and Kuhn back four of Bernabe Scales Welsh Ralston I mean that's not the all-conquering Celtic treble winning team of, of last season.
Because top of the table is Rangers and Philippe Clement is only thinking about themselves and not looking at the table. We're just focused on ourselves and uh, we will continue in that way uh, the next weeks and the next months. It's the only way to be successful and, uh, and the players understand really well. News is next, then we're back. When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! Hour two of the Go Radio Football Show, Paul Cooney, Mark Guidi and Stephen McGinn. We're here with Go Green Property. Looking forward to the games at the weekend. We kick off uh, Saturday, three o'clock. Rangers up against Hearts. That's going to be some game. And on the line, I think you'll probably be there. Huge Rangers fan, Paul. Good evening, Paul. Uh, evening, Paul. Evening, guys. Thanks for having me on your show. Thank today. you. Pleasure. Hi, Paul. How are you tonight? What are you thinking? You cock a hoop? Oh, I don't know. what? <laughs> um, I don't know. I've just been a Rangers fan now. It's just been having a good time so now and enjoying it after all the years we've had. So, I know, not absolutely delighted. I, I suppose yeah. I was just kind of just going to make a couple of wee points. Was I was I've a shout out to Clamont in the sense of just how he's turned him. I don't know what you guys think, but plays players in all different positions. Now, the one that springs to mind is Sean Sterling. The guy mm-hmm. is, I think, a right-back initially. He's played centre midfield. He's been outstanding there. And then he played them on the wing against St. Johnson. He was, he was outstanding there. It just shows you how much he's getting out of players and what he's got to work with. But my, my, my other point was... Well, let's go on that one, Paul. We'll come back to you in your second, uh, right? Let's throw that one first to Stephen McGinn. Yeah, I mean, we're still learning about uh, Phil Clement and... He's passed every test so far. One of the things, when you think of Sterling playing out in the wide, it's something he did in Paisley. When you think the pit's not been great, it's going to be a bit more physical game. and um, He's not scared to go and, do you know what? Yeah, he's a right-back betrayed, but he's going to do a shift from the out left. And it's, and it's almost the way he's managed. He knows what he's looking for in each individual game. And he's asking those players to go and deliver, probably keeping it simple for them, and they're going out and delivering for them. Mark? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember... Um, Speaking to uh, Jonathan, <coughs> excuse me, Jonathan Gould, mm-hmm. in the summer, the old Celtic goalie yeah. was a goalie coach at, at Stoke, and he had Dijon Sterling, and, and he said to me, he said, he's a really good player, but his biggest asset is pace. He said he is blistering. Uh, he said best position at the moment, he thought was kind of right hand side of a back three, but like Stephen just said, the number of positions that he's filled, as Paul has highlighted, and as we heard in the clip earlier, um, Paul that. Um, uh, Philippe Clement played about uh, Dio Mandy he said no I, I want players to be able to play different positions I don't want them to be just about one position I want them to be able to chip in for the team and, and clearly Sterling um, has managed to do that and you talk about that pace Paul even just over 10 yards look at his reaction to cover the ground to get to the ball first to win Rangers that penalty kick you know, his pace yep. boom he's read it he's in he's nicked in ahead and it was a clear penalty kick so yeah and again on a free transfer all day long, what a great piece of business. And look what he's done with Cantwell as well. Because yeah. under uh, Michael Bailey was all over, literally all over the pitch, and it mm. just wasn't working out for him. Paul, do you agree on that? 100%. I think Mark's caught on there. I think that's the difference with Clement. He's getting that extra 10% out of the players. Um, but my, I, I just think the way he's getting the team. But my, my point was about Cantwell, actually. All right, okay. So maybe just, he, he's doing well, right? But I just thought. I feel Lawrence is getting played out of position, and I'm, I'm kind of going to back my point here, right? But I think Lawrence is kind of missing from there, because if you watch the way they played with Darby and all that type of stuff, the guy's got some shot on him, and I think it may be, it's just the way the team's set up, I suppose, but I'd like maybe Catwell get a wee bit, bit of a break, and maybe try Lawrence in that position, a wee bit further up the field, as a sitting midfielder. I don't think he's thinking that. I, I think Cantwell at the moment uh, Paul is a man in possession you know he has been doing really well he makes some yeah. tick you know middle to front he, he'll dictate things for Rangers and he looks a really confident operator just now and I think he's the kind of guy that thrives 
on uh, on self confidence, and maybe the manager sees him look. Just give me a good hour, you know. Make sure you get out there. Let's get in front, and then we'll see the job uh, over the line. But I also give you a bit lawns, you know. If you give Lawns that responsibility, he won't let you down. He's been very, very unlucky with injuries the past couple of seasons, but there's absolutely no doubt he is a quality player. I really like uh, Tom Lawns. Very calm, very measured um, as well, and a real asset uh, to Rangers. Stephen, is that how you see it? Yeah, I mean, as I said, I think Philippe Lamont knows what he wants. At the start, I wasn't sure if Todd Cantwell wanted to get involved in all, pick up the ball deep and stuff like that. I got the sense that um, he was frustrating Philippe Clement, but within the, as I say, he's making the game simple for everyone. I think he's not restricted Todd Cantwell, but he's asking him, just play in the areas we want you to have the ball. And I think it's brought on his performance levels, and I think he's got a lot more trust in Todd Cantwell. Um, he think of some of the early, when I mean, he's taking him off at half time in his early days, he fin- fin- feels as if he's getting the message and he's becoming a real um, important part of the new regime yeah I think as well what's clear in that point that Stephen made too and you, and you can see the evidence um, <laughs> under Clement is Clement gives his players tactical instructions Paul you can tell they've got that you know what's happened in the past four months hasn't just happened by chance that's about a lot of hard work day in day out a lot of good communication and a lot of preparation and the players will know Todd Cantwell included if you do what you're told I'm not saying they need to be robotic they've got a licence of course however the fundamentals, if you don't do what you're told, you ain't going to be in the team. That's the bottom line. So those guys, as I think Todd Cantwell, maybe in Clement's early days, certainly under Michael Beale, met a chance to his arm, but a maverick, I'll do what I want, I don't care, I'm Todd Cantwell, not under Philippe Clement. You do what you're told, but you won't be in the team. Barry was saying he's, he's a great guy, Todd Cantwell, because at first he did seem to be almost arrogant, a bit, you know, big time that he's come here, but Clement has got the best out of him. What are you thinking for this weekend then, Paul? The game with Hearts. Looking forward to it. Oh, I think it'll be a great game. I, th- I think it'll be tight. So I, don't, I, don't think we're, I don't think the Celtic Orange is in a good position where they're winning games 3-4-0. No. Um, I think maybe... Maybe 1-0, maybe 2-1 or something like that. I think it'll be mm. quite tight. But um, I don't know what, I don't know how I know it's going well. I don't know if you guys agree, but I think you know your team's doing well when you can make five, five seven changes. Each game, I can't remember Rangers doing that for a long, long time. I mean, even under Gerard, you could name the team practically every week. You could name the formation. Okay. I thought up your show Paul before, and I was, yeah. I was getting frustrated. I felt me that teams were basically working this out. You know, they could say four, two, three, one, Ryan Kidd in the right, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And surely, opposite, do you think opposition managers work that out as well? I mean, do you think that's just me as a hunter, or, or do you think do you think people such out? Guys, that, I don't think yeah. it's just the ones you know. Stephen. No, you do. I mean, um, Stephen Gerrard's team the year they won the league, I was, I was at Hibs. Um, and we, it was something we worked really hard on. They played very narrow, a narrow front three, a narrow midfield, and they really condensed the pitch when, when they didn't have the ball. And something we spent lots and lots of time of in switching the play. Um, and as you say, as Paul says, he didn't ever change. I mean, it, it worked for him. They, they, they won the league that year. But it was something you could work on. Um, whereas, as Paul says, with uh, Philippe Clement playing Sterling, I don't think Craig Levine would have been expecting um, Sterling to play out wide. Yeah. I, I fully expected Ross McCausland and, and Cortez to be playing. And, and it's a little span on the works that I'm sure he wasn't prepared for. He's making players better. I'm thinking about McCausland. We didn't know how good he was, mm-hmm. Mark, but he's been in now for quite a number of months and showing... He manages it well, doesn't he? He plays them one game yeah. or two, maybe changes. And I think you can see too, you, you can't afford to carry passengers and, you know, Ross uh, McCausland has made a, a terrific uh, contribution. Another thing too, he's not in the team because Philippe Clement, some manager, I think, oh, you know, oh, we've got a couple of kids through him, I had to bring him through the cat. No, he's in there on, on merit. He's not doing it to, to tick a box. McCausland has made a, a contribution. And again, you can tell, Paul, he's been coached. He's been yeah. taught the game. You know, he's got that natural ability. But then on the other hand, you've got to marry that up, particularly when a young player, how to play the game, how to play the position, how to support Tavernier. Different Paul, things. Paul, who's your player of the season so far? Um, yeah, just, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> well, I see you talking about him today in the paper and you've got the 14 goals. Tom Lawrence is bigging him up today, the Nigerian cap. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he is. And Dezers is, is growing in a lot of Rangers fans. Yeah, who would be your top at the moment? I think Jack, Jack 
Oh. Yeah, we're losing you there, Jack McGregor. Butland. Yeah. You have to have to replace McGregor. Now, you don't hear McGregor's game, game getting said. That kills you how good Butland is. You know what I mean? McGregor was a legend, an absolute legend in comparison to Andy Gorham and Chris Woods and people like that. Yeah. That was some job to fill, and I think Jack Butland is. You see the defence, you see how calm it is. I mean, he's been outstanding. That, that, that's my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's a good shout. Yeah, yeah. Butland's a good shout. You know, he, he has been terrific on a free transfer as well. He's, he's in a lucrative contract, and, and rightly so. Good luck to him. Um, and yeah, there's, there's no doubt that he has been really, really important to Rangers, particularly when they were going through a sticky spell. Um, you know, he, he was helping them to nick a point. Um, he's in there, very calm, very assured, and a proper pro. At the moment, I, I still, Lon Shanklin edges it for me. Oh, oh, yeah. just his yeah. all-round improvement he's all-round Rangers. Rangers yeah but and Rangers he, but he, yeah but in the, overall Butland I would, I would probably agree with Paul in terms of Rangers best player yeah but if I take, if, don't need to vote for another seven or eight weeks but yeah. if I take, if I take vote now I'd, I'd probably edge towards Shankland of course as former president of the Scottish Football Writers <laughs> which he always reminds us of no I do um, Stephen for you best Rangers player so far I, th- I think um, I think Paul's right I think it's Jack Butland I think when James Tavernier over the next month or yep. two uh, collects in the votes of the players player I think the only one not to vote for Jack Butland would be Jack Butland because he's not allowed <laughs> to I think he might <laughs> um, I think it's an easy choice for, for Rangers fans Paul thanks so much for calling we'll speak to you soon uh, Paul a very happy Rangers fan and there's many of them on the socials as well and they're also speculating in what the team is for this weekend uh, because he changes it every single time mm. you know mm. as Deso's back in this weekend from the start he could well be what do you reckon 0808 17 17 700 here's the manager speaking at the weekend about uh, hey he says there's more to come our challenge is to, to be every week better every month better not every game you can be better that's impossible mm. but we try to do that to develop as individuals, as a team, to become better, to adapt to, to circumstances, to get experience together. My best time as a player was in a team when we played two years, three years together, because you learn out of experiences, good ones, bad ones, you become better because you grow. And that's what we are doing as a team, to, to get experiences. Maybe if we wouldn't have had the, the Barton game, uh, in the cup, it would have been more difficult today. So you learn out of every experience, and uh, and the guys are really, for the moment, like a sponge, getting all the information inside and and doing the right things with it. What we ask, so uh, that's a good way. This is what I want. This is what I'm gonna be really tough on. Also, that I want to see an ambitious team who wants to become better and better, and not looking at others, just at ourselves. Mark, what are you hearing there from the manager? Striving to get better. He knows. I mean, he inherited a squad that didn't look to be very good, but he's taken them such a long way. Yeah, he's, he's got every last ounce out of them, Paul, so far. Um, you know, it's been quite remarkable. Um, and, you know, any time... I know he's saying he's not looking across the city, but if we you know look at the bigger picture, any time there's been a slip-up from Celtic, you know, that, that they've taken advantage, um, pretty much. Of course, they lost to... Celtic in December the 30th and, and you could imagine the table Paul imagine that had finished a draw yeah. you know yeah. you look at it so you know Rangers would have been what five points in my head already so it just shows you the importance of, of, of winning um, the old firm Derby games but yeah he's he's doing well and um, I'd like to see Clermont when he's got a summer window under his belt as well what he thinks needs changed and what kind of personnel he brings in and also if Rangers do win the title in May financially it's a game changer for them and all of a sudden Philippe's Clermont they'll not go they'll, they'll not go daft mm. but his budget Paul will be night and day compared to if they don't win the, the, the title Billy a Rangers fan has been on the socials at Go Football Show asking both of you where are the worrying areas for Rangers Stephen looking at it as a professional player just now where do you see some weaknesses in the Rangers team the only, I mean, the only weakness I felt, um, and I've not seen a, a great deal of Cortez, was obviously the injury to Sima, um, injuries to Sima and Danilo. Um, I still think they're a bit short in terms of, I think Mark said it as well, just that, the poacher, a really, really tight game. You, th- you look at the goals at the weekend, um, a wonder goal from Diomande, I know it's a really tricky surface, and two penalties for James Tavenier, probably, if they were to fall short, you'd probably look at them not signing a Shankland. 
um, in January. But to, to weigh that up when you're not giving it away at the other end, when you're so confident and, and digging out clean sheets and really strong defensive record, then you only really need that one goal. You only really need that that breakthrough. So, um, but I, that was the area that I thought I thought they might have got a number nine in um, with Danilo's injury, Mark. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one position that I thought, and I'm sure the manager would would, would be the the same. And they have brought in Silva, they've beefed up, they've brought in Cortez. That you know they're getting a tune uh, now and again at Adessas, which is uh, good um, for them. And and you know in terms of attacking midfielders, they've they've got good options um, as well, Paul. So it's been it's been good. The return of Suter I think has been important as well. And I know he's probably at fault for the goal they conceded against Ross County, um, but uh, I like John Suter. You know, I just like what he brings. He brings something um, different. Can bring the ball out. Um, I, I think he's he's very composed. He's a good communicator, and um, you know he'll he'll be very important in the in the, the final three months of the season. Alex has been on saying, guys, do you pay any credence to the su- supercomputer? You would see it online, which is predicting that one of the big two is going to win it. We know that, <laughs> and they think it's the blue end. So they're saying Rangers are going to win it. So the Rangers fans, the blue end of town, will be happy. Um, and it may well be the case. XG is such a big thing now, Stephen. I'm looking at you first. Su- supercomputers, do you go on to see what, what it's saying? I mean, I try not to... You, you, you pay it, kind of... You, you look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the the stats at the minute, I mean, you look at... One of the things you pointed out when Celtic drew with Aberdeen was the, the XG, the amount of shots they had in the last few games, even the Kilmarnock one at the weekend. They're dropping points, but it was probably noticeable how many shots... In the corners and everything, it seemed to be quite e- even in the commander shade in the second half. So it's something you try. I mean, you try not to get bogged down while you're still playing on the stats, but it's very hard to get away from when you're not playing. Yeah, the latest stats, Mark, it's probably above your pay grade as it is mine. <laughs> um, it says Rangers after results at the weekend have a 68 percent chance of lifting the title, compared it to Celtic's 32 percent. So that's how it looked on Sunday night. I, well, when I was on on Tuesday, Paul, I said 65-35 for me um, in Rangers' right. yep. um, favour. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, like computers' opinions, you know, whatever way you want to do it, that that's all it is. It's all about the players on the park and going out and getting their, their jobs done and, and, and getting over the line. But right now, looking at that great word, momentum, confidence, everything, I think it right now all points towards Rangers winning the title. If you want to speak to Mark or Stephen, 08, 08 17, 17 700, Stephen? Not even a percent for hearts. <laughs> I'll have a look I'll dig deep The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents Call 0141 374 0409 Let's go All the networks well Sky Sports is uh, full of Joe Hart retiring at the end of the season 75 England caps you know the story although we'll never forget being there at Hamden and Scotland Twice oh, went course, ahead, yeah, eh? and Harry Kane, yeah, yeah Lee Griffiths, but, but just what twenty-five yards out free kick, boof, goal. But what a career, Joe Hart, seventy-five caps, a treble last season with Celtic, a double the season before, two title wins in England, the biggest title in the world, probably the toughest to get, and what else? Two cups as well down there. Stephen, he's been a phenomenal and a big part of the. Ange Postacogla era and the Brendan Rodgers and still a lot to play for he's a big influence yeah I mean he was a superstar he was one of the best yeah. goalkeepers in the world for a long time um, and, and as a Celtic player up here he's been huge for Celtic on and off the park um, even at his age even his enthusiasm for um, winning trophies up here when you think of winning the English Premier League he wins the, the domestic trophies up here and it means you look at him and you think it's his first ever trophy. Um, such an infectious character. Just watching the Aguero. Mark, <laughs> take us through it there. There you see he's wearing the 25 Joe Hart. That uh, moment when Man City won the a, title. What a moment. Um, that was, yeah. Mm. In fact, I, I, I remember it before you were talking about the football writers. They were in the hotel, the Hilton Double Tree, watching it, the live games that day. And I think Man United did it Sunderland. Yeah. And you think, that's it. It's all over. They've done it. And of course, there's that iconic commentary from... From Martin Tyler, uh, in terms of uh, Aguero, and uh, yeah, nice for, for for Joe Hart to be a part of it. And Barry sp- speaks about him too. Barry was a teammate yeah, of his um, at Birmingham City. I think he started his career at Shrewsbury mm-hmm. Town, so it's always yeah. nice you see them, you know, get up the levels. Um, 
starting at smaller clubs so he's been great and do you know what his story might not be finished yet Paul mm-hmm. there might still be a couple of things to, to add in before they close the book yeah the three lines there I think that's England isn't it they're uh, saying mm. thank you Joe well done congratulations but you're right 12 games to go in the Premiership and uh, the Cup games as well potentially it could be the quarterfinal semi and the final as well in fact Celtic wouldn't expect well not expects the wrong word Mark but um, well you thought they would be there head to head with Rangers all the way yeah I mean uh, you, well you look at the Scottish Cup what the home tie against Livingston for a place in the semi-final mm-hmm. great suspect to Livingston that should be a gimme and the thing is Paul so this is what's great about our, our league race at the moment it's still in both their hands the Rangers have the advantage just now they're in the driving seat they look, they look the most likely for the reasons we've spoken about um, but it's still in Celtic hands they don't need a favour and when you look at the, the amount of winners that's in that team the trophy haul that they've had in the past six or seven years and the manager as well who for me looks a wee bit flat just now but never rule out Brendan Rodgers because of his CV he's a winner he can't rule Celtic out and that's what makes the next potentially the next ten weeks you know could be absolutely box office for Scottish football Who supports the manager in a case like this? So uh, uh, Rangers is going well for Philippe Clement must have been a lonely place for Michael Beale it's mm-hmm. a different story it's, it's Brendan Rodgers has come back here mm-hmm. I think it surprised everyone Michael Nicholson went to see him in the sunshine of uh, Mallorca back in what June and now that we're into deep into February it lo- looks like in a lonely place now you could say he's paid loads of money I wonder who a manager and specifically in this case who he's got that he can be close with can confide in because you can't confide in the people that work for you no sometimes you need to just yep. pull yourself away from it Paul and I know a lot of managers do that they'll maybe just stay away from the training ground or give themselves a day off mm-hmm. or give the players a day off whatever um, they always think that there's that there's other managers out there that they turn to it might be a it might be a family friend it might be a brother it might be a next door neighbour might be an old coach that coached you w- when you were a youth and you've kept in touch and sometimes you just pick up the phone to someone for two minutes and you get a wee nugget off them it doesn't need to be complicated it's no rocket science but a lot of managers will tell you just a wee nugget just a different outlook a different set of years a different opinion apart from your backroom guys that you're dealing with day to day and sometimes it's just that wee trigger moment that can change everything also the one person that I would imagine he reports to the chief exec Michael Nicholson Mm. talented young chief exec surely the relationship between the chief executive of the football club of the PLC Mm -hmm. and the manager should be close it should be yeah. Not only two points of it. It's not as yeah. if you're saying, Oof, the manager's you know, 12 points behind, yeah. oh, uh, keep him away from me. I, yeah, I, I don't know. You would imagine. I, I don't know the dynamics, yeah, but sure. I, I just don't think, for me, again, you know, using your, your, your journalistic experience and different things, that for me, the dynamics are not right behind the scenes. Now, who's to blame for that? If there's any blame to be apportioned, I don't know. But I said a couple of weeks ago, and I'll stand by it, I think something will need to give at the end of the season in terms of people within the the, the football club uh, with titles with senior positions and maybe it'll be the manager maybe it'll be someone else maybe it'll be one or two people but something will need to give because you, you look back at the evidence of what Brendan Rodgers has said since the closure of the summer window and it all points towards him not being fully satisfied and feeling he's not getting the support that he deserves perhaps the support he was promised in the summer at those meetings we don't know that we weren't privy to those meetings with Michael Nicholson and Chris McKay um, and, and Brendan. You've then got Callum McGregor, the captain, coming out in mm-hmm. December and saying, we need better quality mm-hmm. on the pitch. So there's a captain backing up what the manager said as well. So you look at all that into the, the picture um, and you're saying, if Celtic don't win the league this season, is it all down to the manager or is it the, the overall structure and policies of the club? This, I mean, it's a challenging time. I can only speak from... <laughs> Being a player, this is when you look at a manager. This is when you're you're always watching his behaviours, his body language. You listen to every word he says, who he's addressing his um, sort of comments at, what he means by it. Um, this is when this is when you look at Brendan Rodgers and his whole, whole time's a my manager up here in Scotland. Nobody nobody will remember what he says after he've, he's won a treble, after how he addresses the players, what he did on the Monday after that. But they'll be doing it now because because they're looking at him as a leader. Does he think this is over? Does he think they've lost the grip on the title, or does he still really, really believe in that squad? 
does he believe in us? What teams are going to pick? How consistent has he been in his behaviours and the teams he's picking? And and is he the man that's going to deliver, help us deliver this, uh, retain this trophy? Kieran's been on asking just before the news. You mentioned about how Celtic finished at the weekend. The team uh, up against Kelly. You made the point about Yang on Nicholas Kuhn and uh, another player as well. So, what would your team? I take your point on that, Mark. You got what he was saying. Mm-hmm. That, See how the game, where were the, bring on maybe more defence. Burnaby, he didn't challenge. John Hartson on here the other night, as you know, was really critical of Burnaby. Um, we could look in that, back on that, but also what's he going to do for Sunday? What do you think he is going to do for the lineup? Well, Paul, I'll, I'll go back. You know, we, were, we were just discussing there who the managers maybe go to if they're needing a wee yeah. pick-me-up. Mm-hmm. You know, and they do, trust me, You know, a lot of managers do at, at different moments. Even when things are going well... Um, and I'll go back to an old phrase that, that, that I first heard from Gordon Strachan. I don't know where Gordon got it from. Maybe it was his own phrase when he was doing the, the rounds at the Sunday Mail and deal, dealing with Gordon a lot. And, it, and when it came to old firm games, Glasgow Derbies, whatever you want to call them, um, Gordon would say, when it comes to games against mm-hmm. Rangers, you pick a team as though your life depended on it. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean picking the living most of talented players. So different qualities to Gordon win. And I think... Perhaps if I'm Brendan Rodgers, that would be my mindset now starting on Sunday. 11 players to save my life. That, that's the way I'd be. That's the way I'd be looking at Warriors. The Celtic have enough of them. I don't know. At the moment, you'd have to question whether they do or not. However, there's still a core there that have won trebles um, in recent times. So I think you just pick guys to go and to, to win games all your life, depending on it. Stephen? Yeah, I think he's spot on. I think that's what that's what you'd be looking at for your manager. And I ju- as well, I mean, I don't know if pre-arranged that Greg Taylor would only play 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. But was there a way he could have dug out another 30 minutes in terms of the way the game is going? I, I, I just think of, I mean, we, we the game at the same time. I wasn't privy to, to watching the game. The type of team come car, you think of throwing bodies on, they'll be mm-hmm. playing for uh, free kicks and corners, such a big, mm-hmm. powerful team. And I'm thinking... Can you get a water in the game? Do you really need to? You can win a game. Leagues are won by one nil. It's um, it's one of the biggest cliches ever. Are you a team that can win a, a game one nil? Isn't that not a game where you can you find a place for Navrock in the team? If Greg Taylor has to come off, can you put Liam Scales to left back because he's more likely to defend your back post than than Bernabe, who I don't know should he ever wear a Celtic strip again? Um, a water. Can you find a place for a water? Maybe move Bernardo up one. Is Dan Dyson Maida, does he have to come off? Because there's a lot of managers in the 95th minute wouldn't mind Dyson Maida being the one that's tracking back. Yeah. Um, he's full back, not Nicholas Kuhn. Mm. Um, so probably I'll look at just not just how you, you, you start the team, but what, what, is the, what does the team look like by the end of it? Because I know I would rather play against um, O than Kyogo with 10 minutes to go. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that comes down to the quality available to you um, on the bench and you know yeah, with the benefit of hindsight I'm sure that's been going through Brendan Rodgers' mind and his staff this season exactly those points that you've made So what is your team then Mark? So oh. Joe Hart obviously on the day that he's going to be going and that could be a factor um, over at Rangers obviously Jack Butland best player so far this season so at Celtic it's obviously Joe Hart and if they're fit Alistair Johnson if he's back in yeah. Sandra, I'm not trying to tell you what they're just... yeah. I mean yeah. look all, all things being equal obviously Hart uh, yeah. undoubtedly the goalie your two full backs are Johnston and Taylor yeah. um, your centre halves are probably Carter Vickers and Scales mm-hmm. if I had to pick my, my my next choice out of all the ones that are available for me it's Navrosky yes. all day long Callum McGregor obviously um, is a gimme mm-hmm. Matt O'Reilly in beside him but then again as, as Stephen mentioned I might be tempted with somebody with a water just to come in, just to really be be solid and certainly have Maida, most aggressive uh, winger um, at the club. I would definitely have Adamida start line up with Kyogo uh, on him and then you're looking at, at, uh, at one more. Now, that's where I think it comes down to the signing policy, unless I'm forgetting somebody where too many of the players are all much of a muchness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yang. Yeah. Palmer, Palma, a Nicholas Kuhn. Kuhn. Yep. They're all those two, three million pound players. You'd say over the piece, if you really had to pick one, you would go, you would go Palmer. Palmer. 
Um, but with but, a rocket to tell yeah, him. Yeah, but is there somebody, yeah. is there somebody I'm missing? Even if you're saying again, just be, be flexible. Maybe so it's not your your ideal mm-hmm. position, but as Philippe Clement said earlier, sometimes I need to play you out of position mm-hmm. to get the best for the team. So if there's somebody I'm missing, um, then throw him in there. But in the wide areas, which has been so important to Celtic the past few years, that's mm-hmm. where the... Or can you get a tune out of Bada? Is, or is he absolutely written yeah, off now, sure. you know? It's maybe just... Who knows, but he needs to be exploring mm-hmm. every option available to him. Paul. That's a great point about Abada, because the sticks... Well, it's a hugely important uh, season for Celtic and for Rangers. But yeah, that that's a complicated one. But it's a great point, Stephen. If you were, who's the eleven that you would go with to say, right, you're my main eleven um, to take? So, so going to Motherwell in the context of the season yeah. and in terms of the pressure, mm-hmm. I've picked the team I would go with. Um, Joe Hart and goals, obviously. Alistair Johnson, if he's fit to play, would play it right back. If not, obviously Anthony Ralston. Same with Carter Vickers. Um, it, I know there's risk involved, but. Carter Vickers doesn't lose many games in this country. If he's fit to play, he plays. If not, I'd go Navrocki. Um, Liam Scales in the left and Greg Taylor. Because this is like a cup final for Celtic when you think yeah. about it, really. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I'd just go with, honestly, the 11 tr- tough players that I could trust. Um, I'd go Awata sitting in front, free up Callum McGregor beside Matt O'Reilly. In my front three, it would be Adam Ida and Dyson Maida at either side of Kyogo. Because I don't understand, I mean, it's a tight, tightest pitch, a lovely pitch, Motherwell. Yeah. Um, but I don't understand what is the point in playing wingers if they don't get to the byline anyway. Yeah. Why not get the ball up, mm. up to your front players? Um, Ida isn't going to score goals like Kyogo, so get Kyogo through the middle on the last line. Mm. Kyogo is not, uh, Ida, you can hit him, you can get up and play off of him. Um, and dies in my day, he'll, he'll give you a top shift and, and can chip in the goals. I just, I, I probably wouldn't bother with. Lewis Palmer they've had their chances yep. it's a serious time now every game's an absolute must win or the league's bust that's the same time I, I was obviously trying yes. to find a 12th man <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I wonder, if, I wonder yeah. if I'd missed something no, sorry so you're right so yeah. there you have so yeah. Yeah, you don't need to yeah. bother with Yang yeah. or Palmer sure. at this stage go with those uh, mm. 11 guys Bernardo looks as if he's, he's, he's dipped a bit home don't know much about but those guys have got a bit about them and, and see and and these guys I mean these, a lot of these boys are international footballers there's no midweek games mm. Can they not just play for 95 minutes? Yeah, good point. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you've got people like Anthony Ralston who gives everything. So if you're bringing somebody on, move them around a bit yeah, at the back. Anthony Ralston, when he comes yeah. on, he, he, if he gets done at the back post, it will not be for lack of trying. He'll give absolutely mm-hmm. everything he can to stop the ball going. Yeah. He'll not duck under the ball, no. pretend he's getting pushed. Sure. And, exactly. um, and look what he did at the Hibs game a few weeks ago. Yeah, and he yeah. had a lovely assist uh, for yeah. Kyogo's goal. I mean, yeah. we, we forget about that because... Celtic dropped points but it was a lovely finish from mm-hmm. Kyogo I mean it really was and a lovely delivery um, from Anthony Ralston you're right Paul you know the, the, the 50-50 or the 60-40 against him the tackle they won at mm-hmm. Easter Road yeah. to win that penalty kick and stop each time so yeah I mean listen Alistair Jones would get the nod but then you, you look at that team and you compare it Paul so if we are saying at the moment the only change would be to the strongest 11 would be Hatati would go in for a water yeah. and that would be the strongest probably available 11 you compare that to last season yeah night and sure. day of course night, so you've lost Jackie yeah. Marcus mm-hmm. you've lost Jota we've written off a badder for, mm-hmm. for other reasons but he's been written off you're out of it you know, so you look at the, 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 the defensive central partnership mm-hmm. of Starfield yep. um, so there you are so you've lost those guys and you have replaced them with let's let's hope they turn out alright mm-hmm. that's what you've um, done that's what you've yep. done with players you've replaced them with Let's hope we might get something yeah. off of these guys. That's not good enough. That doesn't yeah. win your titles. Uh, Aaron Moy as well. Aaron Moy, yeah. the, even the first, the strongest team. Imagine them playing against the team that finished against Kilmarnock. Yeah. Mm. By landslide. Sure. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, I have to go back to just over a week ago. Brendan Rodgers saying, you know, the what's it? The negative is here. The noise out there, but the noise was coming from mainly Celtic fans. Yeah, who yeah, care about yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not tonight. Yeah, I've spoken to a couple of. Yeah. I'll say that word again, scunnered. Yeah. You know, mm. it's a strong word, really loyal Celtic supporters. They just feel they're getting taken for granted. They they think in terms of how the club's been run at the moment, and the lack of spending, the lack of um, you know, really going for it. Um it's a one way street just now and they're not happy. At the, at the top of the show we're, we're discussing for football reasons or for holiday trip reasons, Rangers fans, the type of trip they they've yeah. got to look mm. forward to. Yeah. 
when are Celtic going to, for all the money in the bank, when are they going to seriously give the fans something back in terms of, look, after Christmas, this is where we're going and we're going to be competitive against this team. It's not just we're in it for the, for the prize money and we're going to try and finish a point above Rangers. Exactly, the PLC results and all the rest of it. And while you don't want to end up in a really you know, perilous situation, there is a lot of money in the bank. We saw the UEFA figures yesterday. I mean, obviously, still they have to report their figures anyway. It's a PLC, and we know they had £70 million in the bank, and that was, what, over six months ago. The next figures will be out quite soon. But it is almost embarrassing, yeah. you know, because it's going to be a difficult one for them to say, if they don't win the league, but they've got a great bank, bank balance, you've got to try and get both, haven't you? But the thing is, Paul, if you look at it as well, and not taking what their net spend was in the summer, because obviously they that fantastic windfall with the Jota money. Yeah. But they spent approximately 18 to 20 million quid, which is a really good spend by Scottish yeah. standards. But it's not about, it's not all, all, it's not only about what you spend, it's about how you spend it. And, you know, by and large, Celtic have maybe wasted about half mm -hmm. that money. So if they'd brought in, like I said, if they'd brought in three or four quality players, they didn't need to bring in nine or ten. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to bring in another four or five jersey fillers. What they needed was three or four quality players. And they failed to do it. So their strategy during the transfer window in the summer was completely wrong. And I know some people will want to blame that on Brendan Rodgers because he signed them off. And ultimately, I'm sure he did sign them off, but he's inherited it. He's inherited that group of players. He's put his trust in the recruitment team and Ange's judgment, no doubt Ange had a big say in some of those players. But the question I would ask in terms of like, you know, he signed it off. If he didn't de decide to sign those players, what were his options? Sure. Because he was only in what the door. Options? Exactly. Yeah. His options might have been worse than what they actually signed. And that's not a reflection on the manager. Stephen? I, I just remember thinking back to the summer and the, the, the interview with Michael Nicholson and, and Brendan Rodgers yeah. and the, the next level chat. I remember being on this programme discussing yeah. the, the Swiss lad for 15 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and being a bit embarrassed, embarrassed talking about that now in terms of what was I thinking that was never ever going yeah. to happen. <laughs> Um, somebody asked what you were smoking the other night <laughs> somebody came on Mark whatever that means um, and maybe when you think of conversations like that Stephen you might ask the same thing The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property start a new career as an estate agent call 0141 374 0409 Let's go Tomorrow night Andy Walker Barry Ferguson will be here at 5 what about, let's start in the championship tomorrow night. Big game, Partick Thistle against Infermline. Stephen, looking at you first, who's going to win? The Jags would be favourites, I would think. Yeah, I think uh, Partick, on their day, I mean, I struggle to see how they're so far behind the league leaders with the, the team they have. Um, Friday night on the te television, I expect a home win. Home win. Mark, what do you reckon? Yeah, the Jags to win by a couple of goals, 2-0. And looking to Saturday, so our both against Inverness, Air against Wraith Rovers, Dundee United against Queen's Park. That's a great game, isn't it? Yeah. Top of the table, only mm. just at the top against Queen's Park, revitalised under Callum Davidson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're going well. Um, I see Callum has mentioned that the, the playing surface at, at Hamden not being over enamoured there with it in terms of the style mm -hmm. of football mm -hmm. they wants to play. And I, I can understand why I watched Queen's Park against there a couple of weeks ago, so I get where he's coming from. Um, but Dundee United I think they'll still go on and win the league Paul I know it was uh, Wraith Rovers looking the part in a wonderful way winning goal last week but uh, I still fancy Jim Goodwin's team um, to nick it but it wouldn't surprise me if Queen's Park get a point on Saturday at Tannadice and Morton against Airdrie as well in the first division your own division Stephen's looking great 14 points clear good win the other night against Montrose so where are you at the weekend? we are at Kelty Hearts Barry's old club yeah, yeah so Tricky game, a good side, having a good season under Michael Tidzer in his first year's management. But mm. yeah, it, it was it was a significant win for us last Saturday and you could sense the boys playing with so much confidence the other night and blown away a, a tricky Montrose team. And against Ackies, was it? You you were three up and then it ended up 3-2. Were you worried a little bit? Yeah, but, I mean, the first half an hour I was thinking, wow, um, one of our best performances of the season, but... The, the the goal back almost spooked us because all of a sudden you forget you're playing your nearest challengers and it was just all about getting over the line as opposed to at 3-0 you're thinking could this go 4-5 and probably nerves kicked in they get another goal back early into the second half and it was just about uh, being professional and seeing it out and uh, a huge three points for us Stephen what's the latest in Europe tonight of course Europa League so, and the conference 
the Europa League which is important to Rangers fans Lons are winning 2-0 in Germany against Freiburg 2-0 in aggregate uh, Karabag and Braga is 0-0 at half time but 4-2 to Karabag from the first leg Ron, uh, Rons versus she sees AC Milan one each on the night um, 4-1 on aggregate to AC Milan and to lose Benfica 0-0 at half time 2-1 to Benfica on aggregate Milan stands out oh, there Mark San you've Ciro. had many times in the San Siro yeah I've yeah. been there a few yeah. times Celtic against AC Milan I was there with Rangers uh, Inter Milan uh, I think Ross McCorn might, might have scored that night I can't remember um, but uh, as a young Rangers player uh, but yeah that's that's got real sex appeal hasn't it uh, Inter one, Milan it? against yeah. Rangers that's proper Stephen was good there on the European desk wasn't he you can see him with Sky Sports he'd be giving it <laughs> Giving it large. <laughs> Who do you think you are, Chris Boyd? <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Boyd's got uh, a big charity lunch coming up. He does so much, and I know you're involved in it as well. Is that tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow he's got his, uh, his ladies' lunch tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. He does. Uh, he does ever so well. Um, Chris, you know, is loved by Rangers fans, <laughs> not loved by the Celtic yeah. fans. However, taking football out of it, he's got a good heart. That's the most important thing. It's great that what he does for yeah he does and under the circumstances as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, don't forget for sure. Should we look then to well, he was a top scorer at Rangers, top scorer at Kilmarnock as well during mm. his time. So Kelly, huge game for then, Mark. We'll start with you Saturday, Kelly against Aberdeen. Kelly, he won two one, two one for mm. Kelly. Yep, Derek McInnes. It, it must be still fire in his belly up against the uh, the Dons because you know he had yeah. great affection there. What eight years, nine years there. Yeah, he was a great manager yeah. for, for Aberdeen, you know, and um, really put him together. And, and I've never really replaced him. I've tried different things, and, and, you know, I suppose credit to Dave Cormack for trying different things, but they've never replaced him properly. Neil Warnock still chasing his first win. I know he's only been there two weeks. What do you think, Stephen, what's going to happen? Yeah, well, obviously, bringing in Junior Hoylett mm-hmm. out with a transfer window, he'll be looking at that Aberdeen squad, and he's probably seen over the last few weeks why they are where they are in the league. Um, even though they've got the quality of Bojan Miofsky up front and I think Kilmarnock are a better team and I think they'll beat them 1-0 on Saturday you reckon? yeah yeah. But Kelly, who's your scorer? scorer? Yep. Marley Watkins ah yeah he's got quite he's a few goals isn't he? he's having a great season yeah. 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 so that's uh, what you're both going for the home win on that one Hibs against Dundee another of your old clubs um, who are you going for on this one what do you think? I think it's a, an enormous game for Hibs a um, really tricky one Dundee having a really good season and they've got goals in their team but I think Hibs I think they have improved I think they, it was a good January window I think they left it too late probably but I think they've had a good January window and they've definitely improved I think they might win 2-1 two, 2-1 one. Two, one. what do you feel Mark what, what do you reckon uh, Hibs Dundee yeah I, I think Hibs will, will sneak it although I think Tony Docherty has been absolutely brilliant uh, this mm. season for Dundee and I just wonder if, if Hibs lose would they really sack Nick Montgomery would he get the bullet there's, I know there's chat of that doing the rounds however is there? Yeah. yeah I think Hibs will win 3-1 on okay. Saturday and that would put them on 30 points after 26 and if you both if Kelly win uh, their game they'll go on to 40 points and we'll get your predictions for Rangers but if Rangers win I'm thinking Hearts here then they'd be on 40 Hearts would stay on 51 ok Mark what do you think about ok St Mirren your old team St Mirren up against St Johnson Battle of the Saints a one each one each you reckon so that would be I think Stephen Robinson would be disappointed with that but what would I know Stephen what do you think your old club yeah it was a really frustrating afternoon for them last week um, they played really well you have the, cha- the, the penalty a yeah. lot of missed chances mm-hmm. a real frustrating one for them and probably where they fell short over the last few years is winning the games you really should be looking to yeah. win so I think this comes into that category uh, this weekend and I, I fancy them to win 1-0. 1-0. See, the manager had words with the, some of the supporters, or one of the supporters. Uh, some fans are saying it shows you the passion he's got. don't know what you think. I don't know if you saw that. I don't think it was a good look no. for him. You know, I mean, I get it. Be passionate. But there's certain times, even if supporters are out of order, certain times you've just got to bite your tongue. Or if you want to address it, I remember Jack Ross getting into the stands at St Mirren and was covering the game, and Jack Ross was getting pelters from a fan. And he went in, in, right in amongst them, there were 10 or 12 round about him, and he explained whatever it was the support was shouting. And he gave an explanation in a measured and calm yeah. way. Now, I'm not saying that Stephen Robinson no. should go in, but you either stay calm yeah. and ask the supporter to calm down and offer an explanation, or you bite your tongue and you walk away. Mm. And I know he's passionate and he's had an excellent season as a manager, and there's no doubt he's a top manager, but at that point, I think he let himself down. 
Good point. Mark McGee did it once, didn't he? Did he not get into the stand? I know they've all done it. Sure. Just okay. certain moments, just, you know, first of all, what you should try and do, or get one of your staff to do, is calm the supporter down. Then if you, yeah. you think he's worth, he's worthy of an explanation, go and do it. If not, bite your tongue, count to ten, and walk away. What's your scoreline, St Mirren and Johnson? One each. One each. And Stephen, yours is? One nil. One nil. And what about Ross County Livy, Mark? <laughs> well, I know. That's potentially game of the day. Well, yeah. I don't sure. game of the day, but... Yeah. Everything that's at stake, Livingston starting to pick up a couple of results. I think if they win on Saturday, will they go above Ross County? I think. Leveling points. Leveling points. Right. So, Ross County, I like Ross County. I just think they're a wee bit nice, Paul, mm-hmm. for, a, for a dog fight. 2 1 Livingston. If the sports editor said, Oh, you want to go to match of the day? You could go to Ibrox, you could go to Dingwall. Would you have been volunteering to go to Dingwall? Well, if I lived in no. the Highlands, I'd go to exactly. Dingwall. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> Stephen, what's your scoreline? I think Mark's right. I think it's going to be a dog fight. Yeah. Um, I think Ross County have to to win to hold their slide. Um, it'd be such a significant win because they have gave Livingston. I know David Martindale wrote them off, said they were already relegated. Um, but I think the slide from Ross County has rejuvenated them. But I've gone for one one. He took us via the Dramocter Pass for that one. <laughs> That's my <laughs> estimation. One one. You reckon? And your scoreline for that was. 2-1 Livy. 2-1 Livy. And, right, so the big two. So what's going to happen, Ibrox, on Saturday? Rangers, Hearts. Stephen, what do you reckon? Yeah, well, they made heavy weather of it last time. Hearts mm-hmm. came to town, um, turning it round in the last minutes. But although Hearts are on such a good run, I think since all that nonsense with Frankie McAvoy and was he the manager, was he not? Since Stephen Naismith's officially been the manager, they're on an amazing run of form mm-hmm. over a, a lot of months. Um, so it's not going to be an easy game for Rangers but I just think the way they're going at the minute with a full house at Highbrook expect them to win 2-0 Is Dezza's going to score? No No <laughs> What do you think Mark? A cracking game a ding dong I think Hearts will be in it right up until the closing stages but Rangers will win 2-1 2-1 Yes Who do you see in the score sheet? At Shanklin obviously for Hearts <laughs> Yeah yeah I do fancy Shanklin uh, <laughs> to Marcus. score for Rangers, I wouldn't be surprised to see somebody like a John Souter scoring against his own team with a, of course. With a header or something from a corner kick um, and maybe a lunch from just somebody different tripping in. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So you both think Rangers' winning run to continue under Philippe Clement. The only mm. fly in the ointment was the Old Firm derby. That's the only one. What about Celtic then? So the gap will be five mm. points, Mark, when it comes to Fair Park. What do you think? Hey... I think Celtic are going to struggle to win, Paul, to be perfectly honest. I do, yeah, yeah, I do. Good pitch. Um, Yeah, Yeah. it's a good pitch. But the moment, and I know Celtic will point to they've only had one defeat in 10 games or or, or two draws in 11 games or whatever it may be. Uh, However, just look at them, they look really low. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they'll they'll, they'll have had a good week and it's up to them to go and show it. I genuinely do think the Joe Hart announcement, if some can galvanise them, that may well be it. Uh, I'm so tempted to go for Celtic. I don't think Motherwell in any great shakes, to be perfectly honest. Um, I think that could be 1 1, Paul. Wow, 1 1. Stephen, obviously your brother's playing, but what do you feel? I think it very much depends on the, the team lineup Celtic are able to put out, um, what Brendan Rodgers goes with. If, it, if it's anywhere near close to his strongest team, I think they can edge out Motherwell. I agree with Mark I mean wouldn't, would it shock me if, if Carter Vickers doesn't make it if Alistair Johnson doesn't make it if um, some of the wingers are given another opportunity um, I could easily see Motherwell getting something but I've wrote down 2-1 to Celtic you reckon 2-1 to Celtic thanks guys we're right thanks, out of time you'll be back soon we're back tomorrow night with Barry and Andy at 5 The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market Let's go When it comes to selling your home, at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market, at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409.